Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike, but that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Sandy episode, and in this episode I'm going to share some personal pictures of sorts, actually a little test I did, not very scientific, I could have done it better, but I wanted to share it with you, and it's looking at the high ISO performance of the Alpha 77, the Alpha 77 II, and then just as a point of comparison, an Icon um, D5300. And so what I basically did was I had a, just a little bit of time to assemble uh, some ingredients, uh, got them together, put them on a table in my kitchen. This was with some uh, light coming in through a window and, through the, and also the kitchen light. And I just sat in a chair and I took pictures at uh, various ISO settings uh, using, of course, um, uh, the, ap the aperture priority. So the, the aperture was always 5.6 and the ISO varied. Um, on the first two cameras, the two alpha cameras, I was a little bit wider. Um, on the uh, Nikon camera, I zoomed in a little bit more. It was completely unintentional. Um, just I think it was because the Nikon is a smaller viewfinder and I was just, just, again, this was just a little study for myself. So that may alter the results a little bit, so I apologize for that. The other thing is that these are JPEGs and they're JPEGs for a reason. I mostly shoot JPEGs, so I'm mostly interested in JPEGs. Um, and so these are JPEGs. I'm sure if you could make things look a little bit cleaner if you were using something like a raw file. So so let's go look at them and the important thing is, uh, well, two, well I guess the bottom line is the Alpha 77 II definitely looks better when it comes to noise performance, but there's something a little funny going on and that's in the shutter speed. So remember when we talk about the exposure triangle, we've got the, the ISO and the aperture and the shutter speed and combined together, that's when you get proper exposure. So roughly, you would expect that if we kept the aperture constant and the ISO constant in, in, in a variety of cameras, the shutter speed should, should also be constant, right? From camera to camera, because this is what's determining proper exposure. So I'm again, I'm not claiming to be a professional photographer, but I would suspect that if you started doubling the shutter speed, does that mean we're really looking at the same ISO values? Yeah, I don't know. And on the two Sony cameras, they were using the same stock um, lens that comes with Sony cameras. So it's the same lens on both cameras with the uh, Sony, with the Nikon D5300, it was the stock um, kit lens, of course, that came with that camera. So let's take a look at some of these images and maybe in your comments, you can let me know what you think and maybe educate me. Maybe I'm just looking at things wrong, but I'm wondering why is that shutter speed changing? Don't know. So let's take a look at some of these um, images. Okay, here we are. This is the Alpha 77. Note the ISO is 12,800 f5.6, and it's shooting at 1 800th of a second, um, and it's pretty unusable. This is the extended range for this camera, and it is extended indeed. If we crop in, it's a mushy mess. If we go to the Alpha 77 II, um, you know, certainly there's noise in there and pretty heavy noise reduction but the picture is much more usable at 12,800, uh, same, of course, f5.6. But I want you to note something. The shutter speed is now 1 500th of a second. It's roughly, not really, but it's kind of like almost double, right? So more light, why do you have the same ISO? You guys tell me. If we go to a crop in, again, certainly not great, but it is what it is kind of smeary. This is the Nikon. Again, I apologize for using different uh, focal lengths. This was just because this was my little mini project um, and uh, it is what it is. But here the image has, um, looks, looks okay. Um, some noise in it, of course. And the shutter speed is 1 640th of a second. So sort of in between the two. 
we crop in. Uh, it is what it is. Of course, a lot of noise. Um, we're at a pretty high ISO. ISO. Here's at 6400. The Alpha 77 is still looking pretty noisy. Now, I imagine if this was a raw file, um, you could probably clear this up a little bit better than this JPEG here, um, but still pretty noisy. Shutter speed, 1 400th of a second. Crop in, pretty smeary. Uh, yeah, could you use it or not? It's up to you. Here we go to the Alpha 77 II. 6400 and the shutter speed dropped in half from 1 400th of a second to 1 200th of a second. In other words, the shutter is open twice as long, letting twice as much light in. Same ISO, same f-stop, 5.6. Hmm. Close up and uh, doesn't look too bad. Here is the Nikon 5300. Um, not looking too bad at 6400 and its shutter speed is 1 320th of a second so someplace in between the two. Crop in, not looking too bad of course there's noise uh, but definitely could I could clean this up and if this was a raw file no problem. Okay we're now at uh, 3200 ISO and this is the Alpha 77 one two hundredth of a second. Uh, still quite a bit of noise, but um, I mean definitely usable picture. Crop in. Here again noise, but you could use it. Note the shutter speed, one two hundredth of a second. If we go to the Alpha 77 II, looks better, looks pretty good, but the shutter speed is one one hundred and twenty-fifth of a second. Again, kind of like almost twice as much light coming in there. Um, Go figure, do the close-up crop, and um, it's not looking too bad. This is the Nikon, and at 1 1 60th of a second, so once again, kind of riding in between the two cameras. Do the crop, not so bad. If we go to 1600, the Alpha 77 looks pretty good and um, shutter speed is 1 100th of a second and crop in looks pretty good here is the alpha 77 II, 1600 well um, here again kind of like twice as much light this is 1 60th of a second instead of 1 100th of a second crop in looks good here's the nikon 5300 Looks pretty good at an ISO 1600. And this is 1 80th of a second. Crop looks pretty good. Probably a, a notch above the 77.2, I would think. But that's, again, maybe due to the cropping factor. I don't know. And now we're up to an ISO, or down to an ISO of 800. And this is 1 40th of a second on the Alpha 77. Looks nice. Crop in looks nice. Move into the Alpha 77 II. Here again, about half as much. This is 1 30th of a second. And let's go back again. That was 1 40th, so really not half as much. Um, a slight reduction. So on these lower ISOs, the, re, the, the amount of light coming in is a little bit more. And crop in, looks pretty good. And then we go to the Nikon. This is 1 40th of a second, same as the uh, Alpha 77, and if we crop in, looks pretty darn good. So there you have it. Well, there you have it, a very sloppy test, and I do apologize for the different focal lengths. That, I, I believe me, that was not intentional, but the, um, the two Sony's are at a uh, 26 millimeters and the Nikon was at 32 millimeters. I think the reason that I did that was unconscious because the viewfinder on the Nikon is so much smaller. So let me offer some just additional thoughts just about the cameras in general since I use them in rapid succession without really thinking about them so I got more of an emotional feel for them. So the Nikon is definitely smaller, lighter, 
and much more plasticky feeling. Um, probably if I was traveling, I'd prefer that camera just because it's smaller and lighter. But if I had to use a camera on a regular basis, the Sony's, both of them, felt very beefy and solid and extremely high quality. And with the few extra buttons and uh, the LCD on top, that would definitely swing me towards that camera if I had to use a camera on a regular basis. They talked about the original Sony being kind of laggy, and the Sony that I use, the Alpha 77, has the latest firmware in it, um, and comparing it to the Nikon, it was still pretty laggy, as was the 77 II. Now, I don't think I would have noticed that if I wasn't using the three cameras, because it's certainly not a, a, a big problem, it's just a very, very minor annoyance. The other thing to note was the uh, about the viewfinders. And really, the electronic viewfinders on both of the Sonys are just gorgeous. They're huge. They're just beautiful. I didn't think twice about them. I didn't feel like I was looking at anything inferior. And um, it really, even though I think the new camera has uh, some more megapixels, just in my quick testing, they both seemed excellent. Compared to the Nikon, which uses a Pentamir, I believe, and the viewfinder was really tiny, wouldn't normally notice that if I was just using the camera, but really felt the difference when I was um, switching between the electronic viewfinder, which was just awesome, and the little tiny Sony, uh, or, or the little tiny Nikon viewfinder. Um, so those are just some just general observations. Of course, all those cameras are great, uh, and they take excellent pictures. But the one thing that I don't get is why are you almost doubling, Sony, your exposure times when, with this exposure triangle, if ISO is constant and if aperture is constant, shouldn't time be sort of constant too, right? I mean, if this is all the same thing, and in fact, the sensor on the Sony's should be, I think they're kind of identical. They say it's improved, but, you know, I mean, it's, they're both 24 megapixel sensors, right? And improve would mean better low light sensitivity, I would think. So so maybe some of you experts out there that really understand this stuff can tell me that I'm wrong, but I, and, and that's fine, really, but I'm just wondering why would you have to, in most cases, until you get down to those low ISOs, kind of double almost, almost double your your time yet those different uh, ISO ratings with the exposure remaining constant, because that certainly would have an impact on how much noise you saw in the image. Well, anyways, you have a great day. And again, please, ex uh, please uh, ac accept my apologies for this very imperfect experiment. This was strictly for my own use that I thought I would share it with you because it was sort of interesting, but it is imperfect. And uh, if you guys would like, do a more perfect experiment and uh, put it in the links and I'll go watch it. Take care. Please subscribe. And if you get some time, give my podcast a listen. It's called Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. It's on iTunes and other pod catching sites. Take care.